Alam Mingala Bakamia. Dine Symposium Gado, Urology Symposium Chipare. We are focusing on the management of erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction, so that this is one of the uh, common problem, but it is also hidden problem because most of the people who are suffering from erectile dysfunction, they don't want to reveal their problem among the among the uh, audience and also uh, because of the cultural and uh, religion background most of Myanmar people they are reluctant to reveal such a problem in the public so also they are very reluctant to uh, reveal the problem in front of the doctors as well so I don't know the Urology Association erectile dysfunction myamalu pyo yin daw pan di pan hyu yo ga chang paw no ani pan di pan hyu yo ga chang ni ko chano ro ni ba lo di sait tha de pyang tin ne di ha de di lu ye jat ma yi twe ko lu at de sait pain de khu chit de da de ko ku ta bo twe khwin pya swin nui bo twe ko shat sia ma lo bu ပါမလဲဟိုစိတ်ထဲမှာအတာစီရှိစရာမလိုဘူးဆိုတာလေးကိုလည်းတစ်ခုကျွန်တော်အရင်ကြိုပြီးပြောချင်ပါတယ်။
antihistamines, antihypertensive, opiates, and medical treatments for prostate conditions. And it can also occur in psychological conditions like stress, anxiety, and depression. So what are the normals? In normals, there are the three types of normal erection. One is the genital stimulator, which is achieved by contact to genital organs, and it is reflexogenic in nature. Second is the central stimulator, which is achieved by non-contact or psychogenic, usually by seeing, thinking, or hearing or sexual stimuli. And third is the central originator. It is also called nocturnal erection. It usually occurs during nighttime and especially in REM sleep. Those three types of normal erections are controlled by three nerves, somatic nerves, parasympathetic nerves, and sympathetic nerves. And supplied by three arteries, these are dorsal artery and cavernous arteries, supplying the corpora cavernosa and bubble urethra arteries, supplying the corpus spongiosa. And normal erection is also performed by three corpora, right in life, corpus cavernosa and corpus spongiosa. And these three types of erections are supported by three main hormones, testosterone, estrogen, and prolactin. Other hormones support very minor role in normal erection process. Then, let me explain the phases of erection. First phase is the plastic phase, during which minimal arteria and venous flow to the corpora. Second is the latent phase or failing phase, during which there is an increased blood flow in artery during both systolic and diastolic phases. So at this time, there's a some elongation of penis is noted. That is a terminal phase, terminus, sorry, sorry. That is a terminal phase during which the increasing blood flow causing rise in the intracavernous pressure. So making the penis more expansion and elongation with position. During which when intracavernous pressure rises above diastolic pressure, Blood flow only occurs during the systolic phase. Or is the full erection phase, during which intracavernous pressure rises to systolic pressure. That is why the venous channels are almost closed and there's a, no venous leak from the three corpora. And it is a rigid erection phase, during which sexual activities is occur and intracavernous pressure rises above systolic pressure. That is why there's a no blood entering or going from the corpus cavernosus. After ejaculation and cessation of the sexual stimuli, that is a determination phase, it, during which it diminishes the arterial blood flow and reopens the venous channel and the penis is returned to normal plus state. So let me go to the, what are the abnormals in the normal uh, erosion of the penis? There are the three causes of erotine dysfunction, psychogenic, which is believed to be the most common cause in the older days. Second is the organic, and then third is the mistype, which is a missing the etiology of psychogenic and organic causes. Nowadays, the mistype is the most common causes of ED in men. In psychogenic ED, it can be divided into the generalized type and the situational type. Again, in generalized type, there may be generalized and responsive nerves. <coughs> For example, lack of sexual arousability or age-related decline in sexual arousability. And then second is the generalized inhibition, usually due to the chronic mental disorders. In situational type, it may be partner related, for example, specific relationship or sexual object preference or performance related, like the fear of failure to achieve successful sexual intercourse or rapid ejaculation that make the failure of, sorry, not again. Jala, I'm here. Yeah, okay. Okay. 
In situational type, there may be partner related like specific relationship with a girlfriend or wife or sexual object preference. Or it may be performance related like fear or failure of sexual activity or rapid ejaculations. Or it may be psychological diseases like depression or negative mood or death of the partner or girlfriend. In organic type, it can be again classified into neurogenic ED, hormonal ED, arterial ED, cavernosa ED, and a drug induced ED. In neurogenic ED, there's a three level of lesions in the neurogenic ED. One is the brain lesion like dementia, Parkinson's disease, brain tumor, brain trauma, or CVA. In spinal lesion like spinal cord injury or tumor can lead to the ED in the later life. Or it may be peripheral nerve lesions, most commonly peripheral neuropathy due to various systemic diseases or surgery or radiation to the nerves responsible for ED. In hormonal ED, it may be estrogen or anti-androgen therapy, for example, finasteride, bicalutamide, or cyproton acetate, or it may be due to hyperprolactinemia, or maybe adrenal lesions like Cushion syndrome or Addison disease, and it may be thyroid lesion, for example, hypo or hypothyroidism. In arterial ED, it can be broadly classified into two types, one is the extrapenine arterial causes and intrapenine arterial causes. Extrapenine arterial insufficiency is usually amenable to surgical repair. For example, common alley artery or internal pyramidal artery, stenosis or obstructions. But in cases of intrapenine arterial insufficiency, usually due to the systemic arteriosclerosis, it is usually amenable to medical therapy only. In cavernosa ED, it is the mainly due to Gavana's veno occlusive dysfunction syndrome. This causes the venous leak during the normal erection process. So it is especially occurred in aging, fibrosis, arteriovenous shunts due to the previous surgery like Winter's procedure or Peroni diseases. Last is the drug-induced ED. There's a numerous drugs causing ED in long-term medications. For example, antipsychotic or antidepressant, antihypertensive, like especially non-sedative beta blocker, diuretics, especially thiazides and spinolactones, and opiate cemetery and antiretroviral drugs. So what are the consequences of ED in a man? It can be as a very such life in his life, and it makes the man increase stress and anxiety, and it makes the embarrassment or low self-esteem. And finally, it might be uh, relationship problems and inability to get pregnancy and later life. So, how do we prevent or reduce the incident of ADs in a man's life? You should work with your doctor to manage diabetes heart disease or other chronic health condition. And we should see your doctor for regular checkup and medical screening tests. And we must stop smoking, limit our white alcohol and avoid or don't use the illegal drugs always. And we have to do exercise regularly and take steps to reduce stress. And if anything happen, get help for anxiety, depression and other mental health concerns. So by knowing so, we have to stay safe so you can stay erect in your life. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for joining the Zoom meeting in this section. Thank you, <clears throat> Professor Lanewin, for your <clears throat> presentation. Uh, and good afternoon. Aloma Mingalava. Organizing Committee, which is with and second speaker ne intro lobi At the end of the all three speakers presentation, my general Q and A session she
current bill we are being tested in Mali. Second speaker will be Dr. P. Pujo. <coughs> he is a currently working as a consultant urologist at the Department of the Urology, Tinganyu General Hospital. So he is, he obtained his master degree in 2050, and he is also the MRCS and the doctorate holder. He will be talking about the uh, <clears throat> medical management of erectile dysfunction. Dr. Pipicho, please. Okay, hello, my name is General Tengenyon General Hospital, Department of Urology, Consultant Urologist, Dr. Pipicho, Pipare. In a webinar, I'm part of the General Irritant Dysfunction and Medical Management, you know, General Tidal or Shale, we can share it with you. This is Epidemiology in the area, she is a member of the Epidemiology in เจอเหมือนเจอเราไปได้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้ตรงนี
Nah, so dress kalau Ivana Viva. Ivana Viva lo, nau jenol lo, tu dah nanti mah boleh dat. Nah, tahun sesuatu ni kalau kita lihat, kalau kita lihat, 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 kita เสียสละสละตัวเสียสละเลยเอฟไอเอเนาะตัวเสียสละสิ่งที่เราเรียกว่าเอฟไอเอฟไอเอฟไอเอฟไอเอฟไอเอฟไอเอฟไอเอฟ
ไดโอเวอร์ดะจองตอกอมาเนี่ยเนาะไอ้ชุดอะเดลูมิโอฮอบีเนาะไอ้ชุดที่น่าสนใจตัวเจนเตอร์บีเปย์เนี่ยคํา
T2 preference group से बारे तो ये form आ रहा है तो ये मैं form है P वाले P2 जाना ना तो ये बहुत फर्ज़ ना चलते हैं शिव ना फिर वो लेबी मार ये सब one of the another F blue rush डब्ल्यू ब्लॉक है वाह तो ये F rush डब्ल्यू ब्लॉक है तो ये ना शिव आज मरो F blue star ने शिव ना तो ये करते साथ ही ये promise में भी शिव वो बहुत नंबर पसंद Effective pilihan saya mungkin awak perlu itu tu, tapi itu pasal ni. Effective nasi siang ni, pilihan tu yang itu siang ni, tu yang prolong lagi nasi jangan lagi tu tu ye. Mungkin nasi siang ni mungkin tu ni juga tu dia, tu ni masih tu. Just for knowledge share ni mah. Nampi itu nampi ini dia tu mungkin ada. Kalau kita ada tu dia tu faham dah. Tu mungkin ada dah lor. Kalau tu nanti awak saya tu botol lagi ni botong ni nanti awak tu dia kan sini dia kau macam macam ada lagi sini agak macam kau ni skin ni ada. Kau agak ni ada tu. Lo betul betul pun kan tu mai. Tu di di dia cara minum dia ada macam minum air jaga dia ada macam adrenalin, pinogen, neurofon, all three forms of EDU. Cuma ni kalau kau sihir dia ada. Di abgam ini terus ada trial. Lo betul ada trial esok dia alih fikir esok dia. Asyik dia cuma nak dia macam bari bawa ni mineral itu kau ni rasa tak? Ikan esok dia bawa ni second generation PD5 ini betul esok dia bawa ni brokinus ini betul and then sol solubel quinoline side esok dia bawa ni. Then last kali lah masih di channel ada video esok dia bawa. Physical ways to improve ED. Nasib aku nak channel dah guna farmakologi ke ways lebih lagi. Physical ways kali lah channel istana facilitation terbaik esok dia construction terbaik Tony Gene. Ini setiap macam siapa, ibu saya pun mungkin lalu dia ni juga, no, tapi tuh mungkin ada nafik dan terbaik. Ia korang cium jauh mana korang di fikiran suai dek, no, suai jauh mana korang dah nampak tuh mungkin ada, nampak mungkin ada low intensity show with therapy lah. Tapi kalau cium ni korang dah tuh mungkin macam jauh mana, di mana pinai korang ni, di tuh ni dia tak kulong, dia tak kulong ring, tak kulong apa pinai yang pesen lah, tuh abis kita lah. Di kalau finish puli ni, tuh ini macam cium dia, pinai ibu saya pun jauh lalu dah. Tapi di konsep ini terbaik dia, jenar orang yang dah punya orang dress itu dari guna PD5, PG, PG5, PD1 ni dah ni tu yang paling bukan yang lebih jauh. Di kat tu ye, tak main kata kalau finish of lo, lo naya lo dia dah rasa jangan jenar situation atau investment lo bukan dia, kan? Atau lo yang ni. Fikiran terbaik, fikiran terbaik kalau guna konstruksian terbaik ni sih, no, pobi, pobi yo, tu akan dia fuku awal ni juga. Mungkin fakar tu ada juga ni, tau ngan ini di mana? Di mana jenar lo di negri cium, kelas cium ada kudo lain, tapi itu negri perasaan yang awam pandai lain ni kan? Trade lain juga, ada kacau ni, dia ni di fikir fikir ni, di bina tu, doa bina ini versi orang dah lama dah lama. Di mana tau sah di soal ni ada sah no, setengah fikir ni boh, soal lain kan lebih yang show negri perasaan yang show, ikut perasaan yang yang show. ยังสวยมากครับผมมีเอฟเฟคติฟเลยเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวว่าเลยปีนี้เนาะอ๋อเราอีเดียสิ่งเราแต่สาระแบบอีเดียสิ่งยาล
ไม่ติดไม่ต้องเจอเลยนะดีกาชะกาดีคุยกันแต่เช่นนี้อยู่กันนะตอนตัวฟังมันดีตัวเลี้ยงเนี่ยแต่ยังไม่รู้เช่น
That strategy is known as the step care approach. In this approach, there are three layers of the therapies, first, second, and the third. The first layer or the first line therapy concerned with the usage of the lifestyle modification, pharmacological therapies, psychosexual therapies, and the testosterone replacement therapies. The second line of the therapies include the usage of the vacuum erection devices, uterus suppository of the prostate, and the penile injections, such as the Kava jet. And the third and the final solutions or the line of the therapy is the surgery. EUA said that the use implantation of a benign prosthesis if other treatment fail or the based upon the patient preference. That's why I want I use the words Jenny sent because surgery is the final endpoint or the final finishing line for the management of the different types of the urethane dispensions. This is the treatment algorithms of the EAU guideline. It is a little bit confusing. Don't worry, please follow my cycles. The oral cycles, orange, the, the yellow cycles show the first line of the therapies, which is the oral therapy. And the blue cycles show the second line, which include the intragibinosa injection, vacuum devices, and the topical, the intrauterine installations. And the third and the final solution is the benign prosthesis implant, which is in the red cycles. So, surgery is the final endpoint for the management of the ED. There are two broad categories of the surgery of the iridine dispension. The first one is the insertion of the various benign prosthesis, which offer a final and permanent solution of the different type of the, different type of the iridine dispension, irrespective of the cause. The second one is the vascular surgery, which aims to increase the blood flow or to reduce the blood outflow from the penis. So, in the era of the oral drug treatment for the iridine transfusions, what are the indications for the benign implants? The following are indications according to the guidelines. The first one is those who are not suitable for the different pharmacotherapies, that is, contraindicated for the medications. The second one is the patients who, are, who prefer a definite therapies. And the third is patients who are not responding to the pharmacological therapies because of the tachyphalasis. The there are two main types of the benign processes. The first one is the malleable, non-inflatable or the semi-rigid models. And the second one is the inflatable models which come as two-piece or the three-piece models. Whatever the type. The most significant advantage of this benign implantation is the high attainment of the highest satisfaction rate, 92 to 100% in patients and 91 to 95% in partners. These pictures show the malleable models. The first pictures you can see the two malleable semi-rigid silicon elastoma rods. These rods are inserted after dilatation into the corpus cavernosa. With these models, there are certain advantages like cheaper $3,000 compared to $12,000 for the inflatable device. The surgeon find is more easy to insert these models and it is also less demanding for the patient for the usage. Even men with limited manual dexterity can use these models. There are also downside of these, of these models. The first one is penis or wrist fee at least partially rigid. There are patients sometimes find it difficult to conceive the uh, for a device and there is also the risk of the chronic pain and the erosions. These are the pictures of the inflatable models. They come as two-piece or the three-piece models. In the two-piece models, you can see a cylinder and a pump. Inflatable cylinder is inserted in the corpus cavernosa, and the pump is inserted in the scrotum. The fluid is stored here at the proximal motion of the cylinder. In the three-piece model, there is an additional saline reservoir, which is usually implanted in the lateral vesicle space. Because of the large saline reservoirs, the flexibility and rigidity is better achieved in this three-piece model. So, what are the main advanced effects? There are two main complications of the penile prosthetic implantation. The first one is the mechanical failure of the device. 
The second one is the infection of the processes. With the various several modifications, mechanical failure rate is now less than 5%. But with the surgical technique, meticulous surgical technique, and use of the antibody prophylaxis, the infection rate is 2 to 3% with the primary implantation in low risk patients in high volume centers. With the use of the antibiotic implanted processes and hydrophilic coated processes, the infection rate may be further reduced to 1 to 2 percent. But there are also notable complications like impending erosion into the urethra, gland penis, or the surrounding structures, or there is also a risk of the gland ischemia and necrosis. So the final verdict of the penile processes. Penile processes implantations, although it is the oldest form of the modern treatment option for ED, it continue to play an important role in the management. For some, it may be the only effective treatment. For others, it may be the most acceptable form of treatment. With the improvement in both prosthesis design and the implantation techniques, there will be significant increase in device survival as well as patient satisfaction. In this graph, as you can see, the USB 9 implant market were valued over $300 million by the year 2027. The next chapter, vascular surgery. As I have previously described before, the aim of the vascular surgery is to increase the blood flow or to reduce the blood outflow from the penis. Let me highlight a little bit about the blood supply of the penis. The main arterial supply came from internal iliac artery and the final three branches are Babo urethra, dorsal penile, and the Kivanosa arteries. The venous drainage is by means of the superficial and deep dorsal penile veins. There are two main vascular etiology for the irritant dysfunction. The first one is the arterial insufficiency of the Kivanosa arteries, that is the AI, and the second one is the venous occlusive dysfunction, VOD. The arterial insufficiency AI or the arterial occlusions may be due to the local causes like trauma or systemic causes such as the atherosclerosis. Venous occlusive dysfunction, that is the inadequate venous occlusions, may be related to the diabetes mellitus and the metabolic syndrome. Currently, there is no consensus on the diagnosis criteria for the AI and the VOD. We can use the P9 plus Doppler ultrasound current Kivanosometry and the confirmatory selective internal pudendal arteriography or the computer tomographic angiography. These are the suggested patient selection criteria for the penile revascularizations. The patient should be young, patient should be free of vascular, neurological, or hormonal risk factors for ED. There should be no active psychiatric disorder, baroni disease must be excluded. There should be a recent or the chronic perineal or pelvic trauma history, and the focal occlusive disease of the common benign or kivanosa artery must be confirmed before the surgery. There are three principal surgery for the benign revascularizations. The first one is the Merkel 2 procedures. In this procedure, there is a derived anastomosis between the inferior bigastric artery and dorsal benign artery, either in the end-to-end -end or end-to-side fashions. In this way, the blood supply of the penis is augmented. The second one is the fallow facial procedures. In these procedures, inferior bigastric artery is anastomosed to the deep dorsal vein. And there is also ligation of the dorsal vein distally in order to prevent the glandular hyperemia. In this retrograde fashion, the blood supply of the penis is enhanced. The finally and the most complex procedure is the Hori procedures. In this procedure, there is a triversal anastomosis between the inferior bigastric artery, deep dorsal vein, and the dorsal penile artery. What about the results? The Mercado procedure has the lowest success rate, 56%, but this success rate is improved with the follow and Fisher procedures, and among them, Hori procedure has the highest success rate. But there are also notable complications of the vascular surgery, such as the hematoma formation, loss of benign land, decreased benign sensation, gland cyberemia associating with the macular procedure. 
There are two additional subtitles of the P9 revascularization, which include the small versa angioplasty and standing, but these methods still lack long-term studies and the early results of these techniques are not very promising. That's why I would like to skip the discussion about these endovascular procedures. Then come to my conclusions. Uh, this is the take-home message. The penile prostate implantations continue to play an important and critical role in the ED management. It may be the only treatment and most satisfying option for the sun patients. And in highly selected individuals, vascular surgery has a high success rate. Thank you very much for your kind, kind attentions. And I would like to conclude my presentation with the following phrase. And thanks again. Thank you, Dr. Ling Aohan, for your very interesting and very informative and very nice presentation. So <clears throat> this section will be a Q&A section. I think we have a few questions here. So and the, uh, the first question is, Any role of testosterone injection in ED over 50? <clears throat> Dr. Neeling asked that question. So, Dr. P. Pujo, P. Malam Devona, any role of the testosterone therapy <clears throat> at the age of an ED over 50? Okay. Uh, โอ้แม่อาคิโนมาตั้งอาเดโจลูนารีไดโนเทสโตสเตรนทูโบไม่ขึ้นเลยหรอกเนี่ยเอ่อตู้เอ็ดซีเวนเทสโตสเตรนเ
Most of them are running in a stressful condition, stressful environment. medical therapy stressful condition stress release ဖြစ်အောင်အရင်လုပ်ဝမယ်တချို့တွေဆိုအရင်ဒီပရက်ရှင်တဆိုလိုတာဒီဘက်ခင်မှာအပြိုင်ဆိုင်နေလဲအရ